All right, so today uh, we got a litter of baby Dominican red mountain boas born. Uh, again, as always, excuse the, the poor camera angle. It's just the only place that I could clip my, my phone to. Um, but we'll make do. Um, so yeah, I seen this girl giving birth this morning, probably around like one o'clock, I think I noticed, but I was stuck working the store all day, so. I just got down here now to pull them, um, pull the glass out, and you probably can't really see, but there's babies up here in the branches. Uh, there's babies everywhere. Let me see. Get this guy off the basking spot. Yeah, so, like I said, these are Dominican red mountain boas which is Chilobothrus um, striatus. Uh, maybe if I'm not standing here will it focus. And they're in full shed already. You can see a little umbilical hanging there. So these guys used to be in the same genus uh, as the rainbow boas and epicrates, but they got separated out. Uh, they honestly remind me a lot of a rainbow boa. I find they like to sit at the same temperatures, like low 80s. Um, the Dominicans and the Bahama boas as well, actually, I noticed. Really don't like to get sprayed with water, that's for sure. Uh, but I keep them pretty much the same as a rainbow boa, just not as, uh, not quite as moist. And so I don't know if you've seen, I just pinched something off and it was, there's the umbilical and there's this little like fat knot right there. Uh, I pinched it off after that knot. And then the rest it'll either, like it'll kind of just absorb and then fall off the excess. But good sized babies. As you can see, they're really fat. Um, so far, no big yolks hanging or anything like that. Now this girl's last litter was, she had 15 live and one stillborn. So, I'm checking count, there's two there. Uh, this guy's hilarious. He's just perched up here on the branch above the water dish. And this is a really cool snake because they're all over the place in terms of color. Like they all kind of start out this rusty color. And as they grow, some turn out to be super orange, some turn out to be like almost blood red. Uh, you get some that are more like gray with some rusty patterns. But they're really variable. This one's got a really dark head, which is cool. Three. One thing with these guys is typically they start out as lizard feeders, which out here in Canada, uh, we can't really, it's difficult to get like hatching and moles and stuff. So what I did with my last litter, um, I actually tried everything to begin with, like yellowhead geckos, uh, different hemidactylus species. I tried a bunch of different stuff and it wasn't really working. Um, so I ended up force feeding them mouse tails uh, and then they got a little bit bigger and, and then I moved over to uh, force feeding them pinky heads, which these babies are actually bigger than last year, or well, last litters. And basically for me, once I got them to eat like five pinky heads, they all started to switch over to just whole frozen thawed pinkies. They're really cool. It looks like it's shedding, but that's actually just like dried, uh, like part of the, the embryonic sac. Uh, Yeah, 
not the best quality videos, but like, I mean, you get to see some cool stuff, so whatever. Four babies. Uh, this guy's just hanging here, too. I always think it's cool when you get a litter of snakes born and then all the babies are up in the branches hanging out. Another little one. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No. <laughs> Um, yeah, like I said, I usually keep these guys. I've been changing the way I've been keeping, like I was keeping my room around 80 degrees during the day, and then they all have basking spots, which most of the species I keep pretty much never bask, um, other than gravid females. But I'm actually in the process of converting my whole collection over to just ambient heating, uh, which is a whole other very long conversation that will probably have its own video. Uh, but I just have the basking lights on right now uh, just to light it up a bit. And they're just real glossy little things right now. But they're really fat though. Like these are thick babies. Six. Got six babies. Now the last litter, there's two standout babies that when you got the bucket of the whole litter, these two babies just stood out like they're glowing red and orange. Uh, I didn't, at the end of the day, it ended up being a pair, but I've got three males here and one female. So I held back the female of that. And then these Dominicans are actually a, a co-project uh, between me and a good buddy of mine, Daniel, uh, who was formerly known as uh, Monkey Tails Canada. These were all part of his collection, and then when he downsized, uh, he sent them over here on a partnership. So see, this one's got still a lot of stuff hanging out, so we're not going to muck around with that one too much. I'm just going to get it in the container here. Which basically, I've just got a container of, uh, just a container of water. And I'm putting all the babies in there so they can get a little bit of a rinse off. Uh, I feel. This vision cage has got this lip. Stuff likes to go hang out up top there. Same thing with the underside. I got lucky last year where <laughs> she didn't give birth inside of the cork tube, she gave birth on top of it, um, but this time I did not get so lucky. There's definitely a whole pile of babies in here. And next year I'll definitely not give her this cork tube because there's a squished baby that's head pinned in there. That kind of sucks. Oh, here comes mom, not so happy with me. Just trying to get her 
out of here before she tightens up and squishes any more babies. Chomp here. Okay. Now. There's no babies coming out. So this is mom here. Nice and slippery and slimy. You can see the size of her. She's like, you know, whatever, a good six feet. Beautiful snake. Something really cool with this species too is they, uh, they're kind of like a crested gecko, like they fire up. So if you see, don't bite me. Uh, if you see them at night, quite often they're bright red. But yeah, good size. Not a super thick animal. As always, I'm just going to throw her in that tub of water, give her a little rinse off, let her uh, have a drink. Okay, now this baby, unfortunately, a very nice baby, was had its neck pinned against the side of the bark, and so lesson learned. Uh, next year, I'm not gonna let her have that tube. It's actually a really good, good looking baby. Too. Um, okay, so we got this is baby number seven, live baby number seven. Grab some paper towel, things are getting pretty slimy around here. Nine. I figure out some sort of lighting situation or something so you can see this stuff better. But oh, yeah, I think this is number ten. Cool. Yeah, and these guys are known to have pretty big litters too. Um, so I'm curious to see what size this litter is. See, a bunch of gunk on there. Good nasty mess. Well, 
thirteen. There we are. So like I said, last year she had fifteen live babies. And we're at I think thirteen there. We got a feisty one. Fourteen. Another little plump baby. Seventeen, a bunch of gunk on his head. Just got totally distracted and lost count. This is a, uh, I think this is 18, but it's got a funny little, I don't know what you see, a little funny little bump right there. We'll see what's up with that. Perfect baby otherwise. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so I've probably, messed up I I think that's baby 18 um, so my head just been gone this last month has been so insane um, just running the shop and having so many babies look after and showing show and everything it's a little bit wild lately looking like we got 18 babies uh, could be 17 who's to say uh, and then there was also this honestly really nice baby which is a shame um, that was just squished under the mother so lesson learned for next time um, I actually man that was a really nice baby um, I'm actually going to be upgrading the female Dominican and the female Bahamas to some bigger cages because these ones are basically like ah uh, they're three foot by like 30 inches like they're pretty small cages at this point because they're getting pretty big but I just wanted to wait A because I didn't want to move her before she gave birth and B the doors and you know this side and everything like it's got foam stripping 
and the vents on the vision cages are so secure, like these babies just get out of everything. So I left them there, but I'm going to be upgrading them to something secure. Uh, and then all the males are just going to stay in these cages. Um, what else? Yeah, Dominican Red Mountain Boys. Uh, I get a lot of messages when I have these babies available. Um, people wanting red ones. Uh, like I said, they start a rusty color and then they develop either like a blood red or orange or gray orange. Like you can't necessarily say. Um, but yeah, this is a big pile of babies in here. So what I'll do is I'll just put them in a couple big tubs in a rack on moist paper towel, wait for all the babies to shed, and then at that point I'll separate them all, label them, and begin the excruciating feeding trials because, well, I'll tell you, these things are fun to get started. Um, going the route of no lizards to begin with. But, yeah. Baby Dominican Red Mountain Boas. Um, if you guys have any interest in these, just shoot me a message uh, on Facebook, The Reptile Shop Red Deer, or Instagram, which is just the underscore reptile underscore shop, which is where I post most of my breeding updates and everything. The Instagram is pretty much just all my breeding projects, uh, and then the Facebook is just, you know, kind of store shenanigans. But yeah, there you have it. Dominican Red Mountain Bowlers, out here in Canada.